In video 2285, we made this. It's a simple orrery. Now, it was a lot of fun to make, and we used the Bamboo Lamp 3D printer and the Xtool P2CO2 laser to cut the various parts. We used the laser on the flat parts and the printer on the twiddly roundy bits. And the laser really was astonishing. It was fast, it was accurate, it was clean, it was a beautiful job, and it inspired me to want to do something that was much more complicated and would use more of the laser's advantages. And I decided on the Antikythera. Now the Antikythera is in fact an orrery, but it's an orrery with two main differences. And those differences arise from when the Antikythera was actually built, because it was built in the classic period. Arguments are around it saying somewhere between sort of 150 BC and 87 BC, because it was discovered in 1901 off the island of Antikythera in a shipwreck, and it's been a mystery ever since. The first difference is it's not heliocentric. Heliocentric is where we understand the solar system as the sun being at the centre, and of course that creates nice almost circular orbits of the planets, and Aurora is modelled that using circular gears. In ancient times it was thought that the Earth was the centre. And that geocentric view leads to some weird wobbling of the planets, and that wobbling is called an epicycle. Now, it's possible to create epicyclic movements with mesh and gears, and if anybody's interested, then I'll do a video of that model later, and we can explore how mesh and gears can create epicycle movement, but that's what it was. So the second big difference is only the classical planets were known. Of course, we know more planets now, and they're included in our models, but in classical times, it was only the classical planets. Uses of an orrery and or an antikythera are basically the same. They used to predict the motion of planets years ahead, and used to plan in ancient times things like the Olympic Games. There's something like 35 gears in it, and they're incredibly well made to think that it was made in antiquity. So I thought, well, that's a prime thing to be looking at, because really the CO2 laser advantage is anything that is flat. Of course, if you can cut it on a CO2 laser, you can print it, although the reverse is not necessarily true. So, although I plan to cut it on the laser, the files will be in STL format, so if you do want to print it, well, go right ahead and print it. It'll take a little bit of time because there are sort of uh, 80, 90 parts in total, so it'll take quite a while to print. And the expectation is that using the laser, we'll be able to make those gear parts faster and cleaner than we could make them on a 3D printer, at least that's the expectation. Now there has been a lot of research into this, including layer by layer scans of the original find to reveal the details of the intricate mechanism. And that means there's been something, I think it's about a dozen replications or so, including a very beautiful one from a guy called Clickspring, who did it in brass with traditional techniques and tools. We, of course, have decided to use our laser cutter to create my Antikythera. Now, I understand that's a bit like whipping off the cover and going, ta-da! But to be honest, I just want to show you the Antikythera in this video because I have done a full build video and it's about 20 minutes long or so and the files are available on Thingiverse should anybody want to build one of these. Now, the quick amongst you will notice there's nothing on this top, and that's because, to be honest, I've never used a laser engraver to engrave. I did use it the first time ever to engrave the name of the planet and the symbol of the planet on the various arrows, but I haven't done the ring yet, because cause I can't really decide. Obviously, it needs a date ring covering a year, and then maybe a zodiac, maybe some star signs, something like that. I don't quite know. But I'm going to design a top for that and then laser cut it on, of course, the X-Tool P2. So we'll do a little bit of laser cutting. Now to set this up, when you first put these arms on, you put them all pointing in the same direction. I've clearly been playing with this, so they've gone around their circuits doing what they're supposed to do. But to calibrate it for first instance, then you point them all in the same direction, which would be the start of your year. Then when you turn this handle, the gears will move and it will move these arms into their relative positions. So calibrating it is pretty simple. To get it to work, all you have to do is turn this handle. Turning this handle engages that with that gear, and you'll notice 
everything starts to move, which is really cool. So they are moving in the correct relation as if we were looking at them from the Earth. Of course, I've done all these in fluorescent because I just like the way it shines up. And there's loads of choices you can make if you want to do that, but just playing with it is absolutely fantastic. The moon, incidentally, swivels around on two axes. It goes in this axis, and this gear here makes it go in that axis too. And that's used to show the phases of the... I just want to play it. That's used for showing the phases of the moon as it you know, rotates around the Earth, if you like. OK, so... This is a lot of fun, and it is a celestial computer. I mean, it's astounding that this was made thousands of years ago, and it's been a fun project, but a challenging project. I don't think I'd have been able to do this if I didn't have that X tool. I mean, yeah, I probably could, but it would have taken months instead of days, and it did take three days start to finish to do it. The files are available in Thingiverse. The Thingiverse link is in the description at the bottom. There is a full build video coming, so if anybody actually wants to do it, then there's a step-by-step -step build video on how to make this thing. But what an awesome bit of kit. I've really enjoyed it. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you do fancy giving a go and building it. And thank you very much for watching. Please do remember to like and subscribe.